Hello people, Zach here again today. And today I'm going to be talking a bit about general relativity and how it relates to field mechanics. So if you have any conceptions about general relativity or comments or questions, you can leave them in the below after the video. But let's go ahead and get started. First we're going to talk about sound. Uh, when I'm talking, I am not emitting anything from my mouth. I am creating a longitudinal pressure wave that it's emitting from my mouth in all directions. Now, if I could speak in a high enough frequency and in phase, I could direct that speed a bit more. But that's beyond the scope. Um, just going back to this for a second. What is the speed of sound? Well, the speed of sound is not a particular speed. It's actually dependent upon the medium. Uh, speed of sound is actually faster in solids and liquids than it is in gases. And it's dependent upon the humidity, the pressure, the temperature. A bunch of different factors. So, but the one thing that is always true is that sound always propagates at the speed of sound. Sound does not move faster than the speed of sound. Sound does not move slower than the speed of sound. So what this means is that if I'm talking to you while I'm walking towards you, the sound wave is coming at you at a constant speed based upon the medium, and I am moving into the wave as I'm speaking, which this means is that the very slightly the sound is being compressed the wavelength is being shortened and this results in a higher pitch and inversely if I'm walking away from you the sound wave is coming at you at a constant rate but those waves are getting elongated as I'm moving away and so this results in a lower pitch now this is not new news this is called the Doppler effect it happens with ambulances it happens with police uh, cars like when you, they drive past you they get really really loud and high pitched and then they get um, lower pitched as they drive away from you. But the same thing also applies to light. Uh, light always moves at the speed of light. Light does not move faster than the speed of light. Light does not move slower than the speed of light. But the speed of light is also not a constant. The speed of light depends on the dielectric permittivity and the magnetic permeability. So usually when we say the speed of light, we're talking about the speed of light in free space, which is based upon the magnetic permit. Uh, magnetic permeability of free space and the dielectric permittivity of free space. So keep that in the back of your mind. So as we know, light always propagates at the speed of light. So if I have a flashlight and I'm running towards you very slightly, um, less than anything you could measure, uh, the light is propagating at a constant rate, but I'm moving into the wave peak, which so this means that there's actually a shortening of the wavelength, uh, which is, results in a blue shift. And inversely, if I'm moving away from you, the light is coming towards you at a constant rate, and I'm moving away from the wave pink, which means that the, um, the wavelength is longer because um, it's less compressed, and this, of course, amounts to a redshift. Now, in general relativity, what they wanted to do is they wanted to say that light doesn't have a medium. That's what they wanted to say. Um, now, that's kind of silly because the speed of light is actually defined by properties of the medium, which is magnetic permeability and dielectric permittivity. Uh, and it doesn't matter what you want to call it. If you want to call it the electromagnetic field, if you want to call it the quantum field, if you want to call it e the ether, I don't care what you want to call it. But the thing is that general relativity and special relativity want to eliminate this idea that light requires a field to propagate. And so in order to do this, they have to create the exact same conditions that are... Um, that make this possible within the field itself. And one of those is a constant rate of propagation. General relativity and special relativity do this by saying that everything moves at the speed of light. And again, I'm going to emphasize the speed of light. So they're saying that everything is moving at the speed of light in a vacuum. Uh, now this is an arbitrary assertion, but anyway, let's just go ahead and stick with it. Um, I'm not going to try and nitpick on that. So now everything moves at a constant rate. And, but the thing is that that velocity is distributed between motion through space and motion through time. So an object that is uh, moving through space moves less through time. An object that's moving through time is moving less, less through space. Um, that's the way that they explain it. So the other aspect of this is that to explain the, uh, explain the length contraction and the time dilation, um, because there's no field there, the only way that you can actually explain that is by warping space and time itself. So they're actually saying that the, the space is contracting or that the time is dilating and that somehow um, is supposed to explain the effects. Now, this works if you're dealing with electrical effects. Like if you're just trying to explain um, an object that's emitting um, 
a signal as it's moving towards you, like it can account for the optical effects. But the thing is, is that objects themselves, like matter, is not light. Uh, and matter moves faster than light sometimes, um, despite what general relativity may think. Um, say, for example, in the, this supposed free space, almost every galaxy in the entire universe is moving away from other galaxies faster than the speed of light. And what they try to say is like, oh, no, they're not actually moving. What actually is happening is that the space between them uh, is expanding uh, due to this, to this dark energy. Um, and the dark energy is just energy you can't see. That's what it means. It's energy that doesn't interact with light. It's energy you don't know what it is. Um, and this idea is silly because now anything that's a discrepancy in your mathematics, you can just say that, oh, well, that's just dark energy, you know? The, the, the math didn't add up, well, that's just dark energy or dark matter, one or the other. If you want to add energy, you want to remove energy, whatever. Um, but anyway, uh, and it's not just on a galactic level. Like, take, for example, there's something called Cherenkov radiation. Uh, in nuclear reactors, there are particles that move faster through the water than the speed of light. So what this results is in a cone-shaped electromagnetic radiation that creates a blue glow in the water. Um, so it's not uncommon for things to move faster than the speed of light. And so this begs the question, um, why then is the speed of light uh, in a vacuum for free space, the speed limit, or, or considered to be the, um, the speed of everything in the universe? Uh, why? I don't know. And But the thing is that these... What this means is that on a galactic level, like if you're talking about planets or um, the universe or whatever, uh, the magnetic, permittiv uh, magnetic permeability and dielectric permittivity becomes a bit negligible in such large scales. And so the accuracy tends to be rather high. Um, it's not perfect, but it's, it's good enough. But when you start dealing with things like nebulas or like the outer arms of galaxies, now you start running into problems because you have the permittivity and the permeability of the space is not the same as everywhere else and the entire mathematics was based off of assuming that it was constant. But anyway, um, my whole point here was that they couldn't eliminate the medium because light still has to propagate as an electromagnetic wave. And to propagate as a wave, one, you have to have a magnetic wave propagation, or to have magnetic wave propagation, you have to have magnetic dipole moments. Um, so that means there has to be free charges in space, um, which are capable of forming dipoles. So you haven't eliminated the field. Um, you've just tried pretending that it doesn't exist and, until it's uh, inconvenient. And the thing is that space and time aren't things anyway. Like, a thing is that which is bounded and separated from other things. And space and time are real and they exist uh, in the sense they're real because um, they are persistent uh, within cosmos, um, continuous, integrated, uh, and they exist because they're indirectly, uh, at least, observable by other existences. So they're real and they exist, but they're not things, and they're nothings, and nothing has no properties, nothing can only have attributes, which is how we indirectly observe it. Uh, we indirectly observe it uh, by the absence of other things. It's kind of like a shadow. Like, the shadow is not a thing unto itself. A uh, shadow is a privation of the light um, that's being cast by something else. So it's a uh, it's an attribute of a surface. But anyway, uh, I think I about covered everything that I wanted to cover on this. Um, so you can just see where these two things overlap. Like, general relativity didn't actually fix the problems. Like, and it, it can predict some things rather well, but there are other things that it is just way off about. Um, like, for example, global positioning systems. It does not rely as much on general relativity as you might think, because they've come to find out that some of these equations just don't work for objects in motion, because objects are not physically uh, length contracting, and they're not physically time dilating. Um, from due to that motion, and it wouldn't make sense for them to do so anyways, because motion is relative. Um, it doesn't matter if you're talking about velocity or acceleration, 
an object cannot move relative to itself. So to claim that an object's motion could influence its own clock rate makes no sense at all. But anyway, I'll leave off there. Um, that's actually where the twin paradox begins. I'll let you sit and think on that. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.